Okay, this is a video to try to help explain uh, Criterion C by looking at an old exemplar of a Criterion C lab report. Um, this is an old lab on conductivity and factors affecting how well a solution conducts electricity. Um, it is no longer used, uh, and part of the reason that it's no longer used is it is a bit simplistic. There's not much uh, room for actual data processing, uh, and the, the content of it is a bit simple as well. So. Uh, as I go through this and evaluate it uh, and go through it with the guiding questions that we've provided, um, in some cases, not all of the questions may apply to this example because it is a bit simplistic. And in your own lab reports, you may need to write about things with a higher level of detail and you may need to show more processing than this example shows. However, I still think this is a useful exemplar to show you in terms of just basic uh, ideas about the lab report and how it could look how you could set it up. This is one possible option. So the first part of a Criteria C lab report um, is presenting raw data uh, and then doing data processing. And notice this data table uh, is well organized. Um, the independent variable, which in this case was the concentration of the solution, the unit was percent by mass concentration. That's been presented down the left-hand side. Uh, across from that, we have uh, the trials trials one, two, three, and an average or a mean that was calculated. <coughs> Notice there's a label, amount of conductivity, and the units for conductivity um, are listed clearly. Uh, now, these could say trial one, trial two, trial three, perhaps that would be slightly clearer. Um, in addition, there could be a sample calculation shown for calculating the average, because in this lab, that's really the only calculation that was needed. Um, so in general, you always want to show one sample calculation for any type of calculation that you do. Um, so if anything, that's what this, uh, this part of the lab is lacking. But in terms of organization, in terms of including clear labels, units, uh, this is a very good data table. Um, the table could have a title. So it could say table number one or figure number one. This is a table that includes concentration and conductivity raw data. Um, that would help me understand what the data table is for. Uh, second part for this lab, really the only processing that needed to take place was uh, looking at a graph. So this is a graph, um, the effect of concentration of the solution on the conductivity of the solution. And in parentheses, that solution is sodium chloride and water or salt and water. So there's a, a really clear title that explains exactly what the graph is showing. Uh, We've got labels on the axes. We've got units on the axes. We've got XY scatter graph with these five data points, a line of best fit, and the equation has been included, which I think is a good uh, model to follow. So it's very clear. It's, it's accurately done. Um, so if we go through these checklists, uh, have we included all the raw data? Uh, I would say yes. Is it organized? Is it organized logically, independent and dependent? Does the data table have a title? Uh, no, but is the data clearly labeled and are appropriate units shown? So uh, the only thing really to improve upon here is the data table should have a title. Uh, data processing, is a sample calculation shown? No, so that would be an improvement here. Uh, so we can skip, that one doesn't really apply. Um, have you organized all the process data? Well, th this lab didn't really require that. Um, so just in general, this was kind of a weak lab for data processing. There weren't really any calculations required. Um, most of the other labs that we do now require some sort of additional processing, which would mean then once you process the data, putting the process data into a data table, um, organizing it logically, and giving it all those titles, labels, and units. Finally, did is there a graph? Yes. And does it show dependent versus independent? Yes. Uh, it's in the appropriate format, which is usually a scatter graph. It has a trend line, and it has an informative title, clear labels, and units on the axes. So overall, for this level of a lab, um, the, the person's really done almost everything with the exception of the sample calculation. Um, so it would score quite well uh, on the first strand. Strand two is interpreting the data. Okay, so... Uh, I've cut out the parts where the, this person discussed interpreting data. As the concentration of the solution increases, the amount of conductivity increases. So that's a really simple and clear interpretation. Looking at this graph, person says, as the concentration increases, so does the conductivity. That's a good way to start. Um, and I felt that the data did show a certain curve, so I chose the linear curve option in Excel because it fit my data line the best. Okay, maybe not the 
the most technical way of describing that, but mentioning that it's a linear relationship. It's not really a linear curve, it's a linear line. Um, the, the linear line of best fit uh, fit the data best of all the different uh, trend lines. And that maybe the person could also say that suggests that there's a linear relationship between concentration and conductivity. As one goes up, the other one will go up by the same amount. Okay. Um, conclusion, increasing the concentration uh, of a solution of sodium chloride in water increases the conductivity of the solution. The results that I got from my experiment support my hypothesis because I thought the higher I make the concentration of solution, the more it will become conductive. Uh, given my results, my hypothesis is correct. You would probably rather say is supported because the data I collected shows that the more particles of solute <coughs> compared to solvent, the more ions will be separated and able to conduct electricity uh, and so affect the amount of conductivity. Uh, and I looked at numerous sources and have found clarification for my uh, effects. So a few things here. Um, they, they discussed the relationship again, so stating what the relationship is, and they've compared the relationship back to uh, not only their hypothesis, but in very simple terms, um, they've talked about the, the content, the scientific principles involved. Um, more particles of solute means more ions, and that means uh, so if the amount of conductivity. Okay? Down here, they're going to go on to that again. The effective concentration on conductivity is substantial. This has to do with the number of ions that are separated by water molecules. Ions are charged. Uh, they can move around when they're dissolved. And when the amount of ions is increased, more ions get pulled apart, resulting in more conductivity. So uh, in terms of discussing scientific principles, it's, it's maybe not as sophisticated or technical as it could be. And again, this isn't the topic of your lab, so don't try to discuss uh, conductivity in, in your lab. But um, it just gives you a sense that in addition to mentioning what the trend is in your data, you're also trying to connect it to your own prediction and to the scientific concepts of your lab. Do, do your results match your expectations and give an explanation of the expectations, give an explanation of the scientific concepts. This person does mention, I, I looked at numerous sources and found clarification. Well, this would be an opportunity, it's not required, but when you could uh, cite a source, if you looked up something and you found somewhere that it said, this is supposed to uh, be what happens in this type of lab, you could always uh, put a citation into your lab report to help back it up. So if we go through the checklist, um, the relationship is stated. A specific type of relationship is sort of hinted at they haven't mentioned specific data points or their trend line, so perhaps that could be stronger. Uh, they haven't restated it, um, but they have compared it to the hypothesis and they've compared it to the accepted scientific concepts. Okay, um, And have you explained the scientific concepts explaining? Uh, at least in a simple sense, this person has. So I, I think it could be more advanced, perhaps more technical, but they've at least ticked most of the boxes of strand two. And finally, uh, this person organized strand three and four together. You're welcome to separate out strand three from strand four, um, or you can put them together. It depends on how you'd like to organize it. Either way should be fine. So the data does seem reliable because each time I redid the experiment, I usually got the same results. For example, with the 0.4 concentration solution, all my results were in the range of each other uh, and never further than 350 micro siemens per centimeter. That's the unit there. Um, Another further that, that, okay, so that's not entirely clear. Um, the entire mean results lie extremely close to the linear line, other than two slight outliers at the 0.3 uh, concentration of the solution. As it is a linear increase, it means that there is a quantitative proportional relationship between concentration and conductivity, and this is portrayed by the equation of the linear trend line. So um, this person's done a decent job of trying to talk about how reliable the results are. The first part of this is to talk about how reliable is your data? <coughs> is there a lot of variation in the trials? Uh, how closely do the data points match the trend line? Um, how reliable is your data in terms of accuracy? And are there any particular trials that seem to be outliers? So they've really ticked most of those boxes. Um, you know, a bit more specificity could be used, um, but I like that they said, you know, for example, for this trial, uh, they, t they said um, they were all in range of each other. That's a little bit vague, but then they said they're never, never further than this apart. So they actually explained what they meant when they said they're close together. So 
that's what we mean when we talk about precision. Um, precision has to do with talking about how close are all your different um, measurements to one another. So, uh, you know, if you're repeating trials, ideally, you'd be getting the same exact reading every time if, if, that's, if that's what you'd expect. Um, and so this person is saying, you know, for 0.4 concentration, all my readings were quite close together, that I'm, I'm getting consistent, precise uh, values. Um, they talk about how close the points are to the line of best fit, which implies that the line of best fit is fairly accurate um, to their data points. It's not way off from them. Um, they pointed out some particular outliers. And, uh, and so they've really, they've ticked a lot of the boxes. They also have already previously discussed that their trend matches the expected scientific outcome. And in, in that way, they've sort of talked about that their data is pretty accurate. They could have referred to it again here, that their data is seems to be accurate because it matches their expectations, but um, they've still done a pretty good job ticking off the boxes. Okay. The next part uh, of the criteria is discussing strengths and weaknesses of the method in terms of the experimental method and in terms of uh, the amount of data that was collected. So my method is a good technique for finding out if there is an application between the conductivity uh, of what and the concentration of the solution mainly because it compares five different concentrations and their conductivity and also repeats the process three times. So this is, you know, in terms of the amount of data, it, there are five different concentration values, independent variable values being tested. There were three repeated trials. So it's a decent amount of data to, uh, to see whether or not there's a trend. Um, that would be uh, referring to the amount of data collected. Um, a weakness in the method is that it doesn't say that every time uh, you do this for a different concentration that you need to use new and different equipment. So the previous concentration does not affect your results. Uh, I'm not so sure I agree with, with this uh, as, a, as a weakness evaluation. Um, it doesn't seem particularly logical. Uh, another improvement to the method is that I should have used pure sodium chloride and not consumer product known as table salt. Uh, other than that, my, okay, so that's a, that's a nice one. It's a good idea. So this person was dissolving regular table salt rather than pure sodium chloride. And I think that they could have gone into why maybe that has an impact. Um, so uh, table salt may have some other things added to it to make it more suitable for a long shelf life on a, on a kitchen table. Um, so this is a, a good idea for a possible uh, flaw in the, in the product that they were using that might have affected the results. But I think it's an opportunity for them to discuss how do they think it might have affected the results uh, and um, do they think it was significant? They say, other than that, my method is effective. Okay, a variable I could not properly control is the position of the conductivity meter. So another possible uh, weakness in the experimental method is that they couldn't hold this probe properly uh, or consistently every time. Um, this maybe has an effect. It's probably not too significant, but it's possible. Um, Oh, this is a, a really nice point that they bring up down below. Let's try not to read everything. Um, the range of, this is a sort of a limitation of the amount of data. They talk about the range of my independent variable, the concentration of the solutions. Uh, they're saying ideally this would have been greater, but that when the concentration hit 0.25%, the probe maxed out. And so then the probe stopped working. It couldn't read any higher conductivity value than was produced by the 0.25% solution. So they're saying ideally we'd, we'd use a higher concentration than that and have a more thorough uh, investigation into the higher concentrations, but we were limited by, by our equipment. That's another point that they're bringing up. Um, so at the same time, have they suggested any improvements? Uh, <coughs> they said, I think that the equipment I used was accurate enough while saying this. I do think I could have used a different probe to measure conductivity for it maxed out at 0.25% as the conductivity was too high to read. That was not possible. There were no conduct, other conductivities and probes in the classroom. Um, so they said, I've made expanding that by doing it multiple times with different solutions, a larger range of concentrations, say from 1% until 10%. The only difference this would make in my method is that I would need to use a less sensitive conductivity probe and one with a larger range. So this part is hitting on the improvement part. This part was the, the weakness, right? And down here, they've suggested uh, the improvement. Um, up here, uh, when they mentioned that they use table salt, right? 
they sort of at the same time mentioned their improvement, which is another improvement to my method is that I should have used pure sodium chloride. So this mention up here had both a flaw, which was using just regular table salt, and then an improvement. So uh, this is not a perfect uh, final lab report, but just to show you the types of things that you might be talking about, I think it is quite useful. So they talked about uh, the number of trials, testing enough values, is the range big enough? Um, they didn't mention are they close enough together, but that's okay. It doesn't always have, not every question needs to be answered for every lab. Uh, I think you pick the ones that are most significant and appropriate. Um, strengths and weaknesses of the data set, they definitely pointed out. Uh, strengths of the experimental method, any piece of equipment have high precision, accuracy, did any piece of equipment have uh, lead to inaccuracy or low precision? So um, they talked about the the connectivity probe and some of the issues involved with the connectivity probe in terms of how sensitive it was, the angle at which they used it, um, the consistency of using it or using a fresh one. Um, they didn't necessarily point out too many strengths of their uh, equipment, but more importantly, we're always looking at weaknesses. So even if a method is given to you, you should still be able to, based on your experience, talk about, uh, which parts, which pieces of equipment, um, which parts of the method led to uh, problems in terms of were the values all over the place, so low precision, or were the values really far off from what you expected in terms of how, how close were they to the true value, which is what accuracy is all about, precision being how close were they together. And then the improvements were kind of snuck in there alongside uh, the, the weaknesses. So um, they did mention uh, using different probes. Um, so they mentioned a less sensitive probe. It's about as good as they're going to do in this lab. Uh, for these other ones, uh, suggestions to make the amount of data better. The amount of data they said, uh, realistic constraints, and they would improve it by using more uh, independent variable values. And they actually suggested values, 1% all the way to 10%. Um, and so I think that that was uh, pretty clear. It would give them a better, a better sense. So um, notice there's, there's a bunch of gaps here. I think this lab was a little simplistic, which is why there are some gaps. Um, but there are lots of things that you can try to discuss uh, in the evaluation. And really the key things to do are point out things that you think uh, are strong about the lab, point out parts that you think are weak about the lab and why they are weak and why they make your results not as strong or why it makes it hard to interpret your results. And then whatever you bring up as an improvement, make sure you also suggest specific improvements. So using the pure sodium chloride, uh, using these concentrations from 1% to 10%. Um, try to focus on uh, giving details, giving simple, logical things that would make the results better if you were allowed to repeat the experiment. So criterion C, uh, I hope it was helpful in showing you some of the ways to present your data and your writing, some of the things you could talk about, uh, and how you can use these guiding questions.